What up, y'all? It's your boy, Tito Ben. Ben Young. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ben Baller. Stop acting like this is your practice life. It is not. But what this is, this is episode 10 of Behind the Baller. We have officially hit double digits. Shout out to my producers, the Dust Brothers, Miles and Jordan. You know what I'm saying? My beat maker extraordinaire, Lakey at Lakey Inspired. Yo, I gotta apologize, man. I've been screaming all fucking weekend and everything else, and I lost my motherfucking voice. But this is the weekend wrap up. And this weekend wrap up is special. It's special because I am back in the Emerald City, the 206. Seattle, Sea Town. NFL season has officially started. We got a very special guest on the pod today, Seattle Seahawk Quentin Jefferson, but we will get into that later. Speaking of the NFL, some of you may have seen my sneakers chain, well, the sneakers chain that I made on NFL Countdown on ESPN. And of all the people that I could ever think of fucking wearing a chain by me, Matt. Hasselbeck was fucking wearing it. That shit is crazy. Anyways, I made this big ass chain for Snickers Corporation. If you didn't know, man, Snickers is actually one of my favorite chocolate bars from back of the days. Um, it's sad because I can't have one around my son, London, because uh, he's um, highly allergic to peanuts and tree nuts. So um, just randomly through uh, my friend Anita Co, who's like family to me, she actually is a relative of mine, and uh, she's like the Ben Baller of women's jewelry. She makes shit for A-list, like super, super A-list um, women in Hollywood. No rappers, none of that shit. I'm talking about like for real celebrity, like A-list stars. Um, so like she had a little connect, and someone reached out to me, and um, Snickers wanted to get this chain made, you know, for the, for the NFL season. And um, unlike the Godzilla chain, this wasn't like a rush thing. They had a decent budget. Um, it wasn't my quoted rate, you know, but when I saw how crazy they're going to go market it, I was like, man, fuck this. Let's get this NFL promo money. Let's get this NFL promotion, period. You know what I'm saying? This publicity. So pretty much each week, a player of the week will be named by Snickers until the season ends, right? So that's 16 weeks. And which um, at that time, the chain will be auctioned off and all proceeds will be donated to charity. It's fucking dope. And at the end of the season, I'm going to laser engrave all 16 jersey numbers of each player on the back of the chain. That's why it's like a, it's a big, big space. For some of you people just kind of like chit-chatting and shit and flapping your gums and don't know what the fuck you're talking about. First of all, Matt Hasselbeck's a big fucking dude, all right? This piece is big. It is not a small piece at all. The Cuban link is like, 15, 16 millimeters. The piece is 47 carats in diamonds, total diamond and gemstone weight. Um, that bitch weighs 900 grams total. This thing is almost a kilo. In fact, it's over 900 grams. So this shit's almost a kilo in gold, and you'll be seeing a lot more of it. You know what I'm saying? And um, it actually, you know, it's, it's, it's dope, man. I got another corporate, you know, big corporate cosign with Ben Bali to the chain. You know what I'm saying? So let's get into it. Um, so last night... I want to hit Dave and Buster so bad, but, you know, getting out of like downtown Seattle and, you know, Auburn is like, it's not, it's not that easy to get over there. You know what I'm saying? It's like, um, damn near, near Tacoma and shit, right? Pretty much. And, um, I had a lot of work to do and stuff. So, you know, I had to get right into it. So, uh, I hit Dick's cause, uh, you know, back in the day, I used to eat at Dick's a lot when I, when I lived here, pause, that shit sound crazy, right? But um, I thought you know, maybe, even though they're a classic drive through spot or drive-in spot, I thought they might have had a plant-based burger, but I was wrong. They didn't. So I got a milkshake instead and then um, decided to hit a little bar, you know what I'm saying, get a little, you know, get some tequila. That's my shit, you know what I mean? Tequila and mix with some pineapple shit. Um, so we hit up Still Liquor near Capitol Hill and, um, you know, got a couple drinks. And by the way, man, this DJ that was there, this motherfucker was low-key crushing it. Like, this place is a small spot, but the vibe is so good. And again, this dude was really, he, he really had the music on point. People were dancing. It was dope. You know what I'm saying? So, anyways, I told you I was hungry as a motherfucker. So, we hit Mario's for a slice of pizza. But, man, that fucking line is always so goddamn long. It's just, it just, it just sucks, you know? And, um, you know, after all that, 
walking around Capitol Hill and everything when I was, I was actually still hungry. So, you know, they ain't really made too many places to eat at 3 a.m., you know, so there's actually no better place to eat at 3 a.m. than 13 Coins. And um, I used to hit that OG location on Bourne Ave. Um, but they closed that shit down like a year ago or maybe two years ago, I forgot. But I was kind of bummed out, you know, because like, and that was when I, you know, way back in the day, I was eating red meat and shit. So, you know, 3 a.m., you get an official steak over there. So I hit the new Pioneer Square location, which was decent as fuck. Shit was dope. Um, by the way, the Cincinnati Bengals are staying in the same hotel that I'm staying in. So um, that was kind of awkward, man, running into some of them in the, into the elevator stuff. And like, uh, it's weird because some of them follow me. I didn't know until like just recently and even more recently, like today. So, you know, I got no hate for the Cincinnati Bengals at all whatsoever. Um, it's been a long time since I had a client on, on the team. But the last time I did was uh, Ocho Cinco. And uh, I made Ocho a few things. I made him some uh, all gold beat headphones. The motherfuckers weighed so much. I'm sure they weighed his head down. So anyways, I headed out um, yesterday, headed out to uh, Bellevue to interview Quentin. And it's crazy because uh, when I think of Bellevue, like, I forgot what the steak spot's called, man. I have to ask my boy Rex. Um, but we used to party at this place called Munch Bar. And this shit looked like some weird ass, like, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, it did, it, it, it damn near felt like it was a California pizza kitchen with a bar. But this spot was like a popping spot, you know what I'm saying? Like, you could literally pop Dom Perignon here. And it was, it, that was my shit for a while. It was, it was a weird spot. I think someone got shot up in that bitch. But, you know, on the way to Bellevue, passing the bridge on 520, I always bug out when I see Bill Gates' crib. Like, shit's insane. Like, it's damn near like fucking, uh, like, Batman's crib. Like, you know, it's all, it's damn near built into the fucking, uh, into the mountain and shit, right? To the mountain and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, anyone who, who, who lives out here understands what I'm talking about. So, um, we're going to get into the interview with Q Jeff in a minute, but, you know, it's, it's odd because for this weekend wrap up, it's, it's, um, it's special. And this weekend wrap up special because Quentin, I just found out, is from Pittsburgh. And yesterday was the one year memorial of Mac Miller's death. Is it, you know, one year since his passing. And I want to talk about it a little bit. You know, um, I did something on Nipsey and uh, in the same like way, me and me and Mac were, were pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? That was my dog. That was, I was a friend. And even on some Forrest Gump shit, I mean, this is really some Forrest Gump shit, but more so it's on some blessing shit. You know, I forgot that me and Mac Miller did a collaboration on some jewelry with the uh, Diamond Supply. We did this shit called Old Jewish Diamonds. And um, I made Mac some, some pieces. He, you know, he bought a few chains from me. And I made Mac two of the most legendary grills of, like, my career. You know, he's a young cat. I'm dead serious. This dude had me engrave the words teeth on his grill. He was on my reality show. I forgot what episode it was. But um, he also put a Pittsburgh P on that motherfucker. He had some random shit. He had a son on that motherfucker. thing. He had, like, rubies. And just and He was just crazy. That motherfucking grill was fresh as fuck, though. I remember... Um, Huge K-pop star G-Dragon was like, yo, you think you can make a grill like this? And he sent me the picture. I'm like, bro, dude, like, where'd you get this picture from? And he said, I just saw it. And I was like, motherfucker, I made that grill. Come on, stop playing with me, G. Come on, GD. Shout out to G-Dragon, man. He's in the army in Korea. Motherfucker was literally the biggest fucking star in Korea. He's still huge. I just can't wait for him to come out and, uh, you know, crush it again. So going back to Mac Miller, um, he lost that grill. And it kind of made me sad. And then... um. I, um, I made him a part two version and it was still dope as fuck. We just did like a white gold version and we changed the font um, for teeth because uh, the font he originally had was Comic Sans and that shit was kind of funny. So we did a simplified lowercase old English and um, man, Malcolm was such a great guy, man. He was so nice. He's so fucking funny. That motherfucker was so sharp. He's just super funny, always in a good mood, man. He's such a creative. He was so damn creative and like, he really had a gift when it came to music, making music, you know. Um, and uh, I'm embarrassed to say, you know, when I was battling a little bit of a, of a pill addiction, you know, he helped me find a place to get me off that shit. So, you know, I owe um, a lot to dude, you know. He, he um, got into a weird place during that time, and uh, he just, he's just a good dude. You know, we talked a lot about um, drug addiction, and um, we talked, you know, he never ever had, like, he was sad, like, never ever told me, like, you wanted to commit suicide, nothing like that, you know, we talked about a lot of deep things and stuff, and he told me the issues he had with, like, with drugs and shit, and what he liked, and whatever, and whatnot, and, um, you know, I was like, oh, shit, you know, it's it for a young cat, man, it's just some crazy, but every time I was with Mac, you know, we blow something in the air, you know, so he put something out, like, you know, 
smoked some, and um, he, you know, he drank and shit, right? But his drink was Jameson, and I like Jameson. Don't get me wrong. Listen, man, Jameson and ginger ale was one of my favorite fucking drinks for a long time, you know. And then I got into Moscow Mules and shit, and just I'm just a weird dude when it comes to drinking. But right now, tequila is my thing. But like, anyways, man, Mac was a Mac a fuck around and finished an entire goddamn fifth of Jameson like it's nothing. But so like about two years ago or less. He hits me up, Max, like, yo, man, come over to Ariana Grande's house, you know, and um, I want to make this ring. And uh, I have pictures of his hands still on my phone and Ariana's hands. He wanted to make these matching rings and these, uh, these things. He wanted to make this crazy, like, weird choker chain that most girls wear. It's like costume, but she wanted to make it in diamonds and stuff. And um, so I pulled up to her crib, you know, went over to Beverly Hills. And, like, as soon as I got there, man, I'm just going to be real with you, man. This, I'm not going to make this about her at all, but she just rubbed me the wrong way. Like, period. I just, she just rubbed me the wrong way. I just couldn't fuck with her, period. Um, I just basically, her entire, everything that had to do with her, I put that shit on the pain on mind list. You know, Mac was all G, but man, like, this wasn't even my first time meeting her. She was just such a little, like, it's like a little fucking bitchy, like, little snob. Like, she was such a little fucking brat. Like, I, I was like, nah, I'm cool. Like, I'm straight, bro. Like, I, like fuck her and any money, you know, like, I don't need no money from her. Like, she was just, just fucking weird. So, you know, for like half a year or so, I avoided her or whatever. And then um, I played busy with some other shit. And uh, I mean, I probably was busy. But um, they like, they broke up, you know. And so I was like, all right, cool. They broke up. So fuck her. And uh, Mac hit me up again. You know, Mac hit me up again to pull up to his crib, you know. And I always pull up there um, and we shoot the shit. And he told me he was sober. And I was happy for him, you know. Like, when I first connected with Mac, you know, five years ago, he was uh, renting this um, this crazy ass mansion in Studio City. I think he did like Molly actually did some crazy ass party in a. In fact, someone put his fucking address on the internet, and like it was just an open party for anyone. It was fucking. It was it was legendary, you know. And um, let me tell you how good of a dude this dude is, man. This dude had this crazy ass mansion he was renting in Studio City, and I left his crib, and we were there now, and he was just showing me some stuff. We were just talking, whatever, and just um. I was trying to leave because I was trying to get to, to London. I remember I was trying to get, get back town, down, down, downtown. And um, I was on Ventura Boulevard and I got rear-ended by an old pickup truck. And the driver was this like, uh, you know, he was young, man. He was like 30-year-old Mexican dude. And he was terrified. Like he was, fuck, he, had to, he was so scared. He was so shook. His hands were shaking everything. And he just like, you know, he, he knew. He's like, he rear-ended a brand new Rolls Royce ghost. So he was fucking tripping. I felt really bad for him. So, you know, like, he was, he was tripping so hard. I, 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 like, I felt for him. So I told him, I said, hey, man, um, why don't you just go take off? Like, get in the car and get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? Don't even trip about the, the police or nothing. Just, just get out of here. Listen, don't worry about it. Just go leave. Just leave and don't even trip. And that motherfucker was so grateful. He was, he was tripping. You know, I made his day. Shit, I might have made his year, you know? And it just... um. I mean, you know, I don't know. He, he might not have insurance. He was, maybe his license was fucked up. I, I really don't know. But I felt like he had bigger issues by the way he was acting. Like, I just tell by his energy, man, this dude was so nervous. It was just, I don't know, man. I just felt like, man, come on, bro. Like, this ain't really that big of a deal. I got insurance, you know. So I call Mac right after I get an accident. I call him up. I'm like, listen, you fucking mother, you bitch ass motherfucker. Like, bro, you held me up for an extra hour. And had you not held me up, maybe I wouldn't have got, you know, if I'd have left sooner, I wouldn't have gotten an accident. You know what I'm saying? So he, he's like, Fuck, man. He's like, you know what? You, I'll, you know, I'll pay for it. How much is that shit gonna cost? You want me? To pay, you want me to pay for it? And I was like, nah, man. What, bro? I'm like, semi serious, but like, nah. Fuck you. You're tripping. You're bugging, man. Come on. Like, um, he was just that type of dude, you know. But, you know, more on some recent times, and uh, this is like my weird Forrest Gump stories. I wish I had a positive ending, but Mac was uh shooting a new music video for his first single off his new album, Swimming which um, he never got to promote, which is just so fucking crazy to me. Like, I just, <sighs> fuck, man. And so he, he he texted me. Well, he DM'd me on Twitter. He goes, you changed your phone number again? I was like, yeah, man. So he gets my new number, and he hits me, and he's like, hey, bro, how you been? You know, everything good? How's the family? He's like, man, congratulations on your daughter and everything. And he's like, yo, man, are you really cool with George Lopez? And I was like, yeah, of course I'm cool with George. You know, George is my guy. Like, that's really my dude. And he was like, Yo, can you connect me with George? You think George may you know, want to be a, do a cameo in my music video? 
And I was like, I don't know, man. You know, let me hit George up and let me see. So I hit George up and we, you know, we parlayed a little bit and talked about a few things. And George was like, yo, man, I didn't really hurt a dude like that, you know, but um, I think I have. But, you know, fuck it. Yeah, he don't like Donald Trump. Fuck him. You know, let's do it. So I got George to agree to be in the video. And uh, Mac wanted to rock some jewelry and, you know, obviously some chains in it. And he wanted a small cameo for me as well. So, you know. We're booked for this video. You know, I'm in contact with his fucking producer. I'm in touch with like the casting director, the person who's handling all the stuff, like all the people managing the video and everything and um, all the above. So we had a set date to record this music video on September 7th, 2018. If you already know what day that is, I'm not going to say, man, you guys look at just Google what September 7th, 2018 is and Mac Miller's name and, you know, that was the day of the video. That morning, I was dropping off my kids at school, and I began to head over the hill, and I got stuck in this really bad traffic right on, on the canyon, and uh, it was like gridlock like a motherfucker, and I was right by Mac's crib, and this is like around, I don't know, around 8.45 in the morning, and I say, you know what, man? I shouldn't have fucking had that coffee because it's fucking on my stomach right now. I got the BGs like crazy. If you don't know what the BGs are, it's the bubble guts, right? And I had the BGs real bad. So like right when I got right to his street where I can kind of turn onto his street and just cut to his crib, I, I was thinking, I was like, you know what? That motherfucker ain't up this early. And I know he got a video shoot today, but I just don't, I don't know. But I might have to call him though. Like it's getting that serious. My stomach, my stomach's fucked up. I might have to call him and hit, take a shit. But um, I fought it, you know, like my stomach has been so much stronger. You know, four years ago, five years ago, um, yeah, four or five years ago with my stomach condition, you know, I have... Um, uh, ulcerative colitis, just like, you know, my boy, Michael Rapport, and uh, my shit got fixed. His is still, I think, fucked up. And, um, you know, you can't hold your shit. Like, you couldn't even, like, five minutes, if I'm in traffic somewhere, I got to fucking pull over, take a shit in the car, shit on myself. You know, like, I might pull over and drive crazy and be like, yo, listen, leave my car parked. I don't give a fuck if it's a ticket. I'll go in the bathroom and be like, yo, listen, man, I'll give you $20. Uh, you know, I don't give a fuck what it is. I always have cash on me because I'm ready to go pay somebody to use the restroom. That was my life for a long time. It's crazy. You know, I was taking a shit like up to seven, eight times in a day. Just my stomach was really fucked up. Didn't even realize until I realized that red meat was like 95% of it and just a bunch of other shit. My diet was terrible. Also drinking lean and just um, being a fucking degenerate scumbag piece of shit. And um, yeah, man, you know, driving in a canyon there's no bathroom there's no nothing and um i'm about to pass mall and i'm like man if this was years ago i'm thinking like shit i couldn't even hold this shit i'd have been i'd have, I'd have been shit on myself so you know i'm happy i can hold it and i'm still in traffic and i'm going down you know the canyon i'm, I'm start i'm getting close to the sunset boulevard and i'm like yo you know what worst case scenario i could hit up emily oberg like i could fuck around hit up emily and be like yo emily I need to use your motherfucking bathroom. Like, you know, that's my niece. I'd be like, yo, listen, I need to drop a deuce. Like, I'm not playing. But, you know, that was like, I was like, listen, it's 911 status for me to do that. And actually, it was 91 status, right? I was 91 status. It wasn't 91 and then one. So, you know, I fight it and I get to my store. And, um, you know, I get to my store, which is opening up. I'm starting to grab some chains. I think, like, you know, what, what would it be cool? I start putting it aside organize a few things and then I go downstairs from at the mall and I go grab a bagel all right I grab a bagel to get some carbs inside of me like some bread you know I want some bread inside my stomach to soak up the acid and so I remember doing that and I'm drinking some water and I'm walking up and I get a text I'm walking back to my store and I'm walking literally on the other side of the mall and G one of my ex-employees G he texted me an image of a TMZ story, it says Mac Miller dead at 26. And so, listen, let me pause this for one second. I have goosebumps all through my stomach, my back, from my spine down to the, my ass crack. My arms have goosebumps right now telling you this shit. I'm, I'm like, no, 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 no fucking way. No, no way. No way. This is impossible. No fucking way. Like, I'm, I'm just... I'm at a loss. I just can't believe it. You know, I just talked to Mac less than 13 hours ago. I was bugging out. So, you know, I was like, fuck this. I left my store. Um, I left my store right then and there. I didn't grab shit. I just left immediately. I headed over to Mac's house and I just get over there. I got over there quick. And as I got there, fucking news vans were all pulling up and shit. 
and there's all these fucking paparazzi and shit, fucking scumbags in the motherfucking world. And, um, you know, I get there, I park my car right on the side. The police come out, and the guy, police officer's like, yo, listen, you can't park here. He's telling me to leave. I'm like, no, listen, listen, I got, I got man, you tripping. I'm trying, I, I didn't know what the fuck, I don't even know why the fuck I got there. Part of it, I think I didn't believe that this shit was happening. I was hoping it was a prank. You know, Mac is a big prankster. And I was like, no, nah, I was tripping. The police officer's telling me, yo, you got to get the fuck out of here. Karen Civil sees me. And Karen Civil says, no, no, that's Ben. He is family. That's Mac's family. And like, she's like telling him whatever, boom. So like, I get to park my car, right? And I park the car right next to um, to Mac's car. And right by this driveway. And Karen is completely distraught. She's hysterical. She, she's, she's freaking out. Now, I'm just like trying to calm Karen down. And I'm just like, holy shit. If you don't know who Karen Civil is, man, go Google who Karen Civil is to hip hop. And by the way, she was also Nipsey Hussle's manager and just everything else. And she wasn't Max manager, but she was um, involved a lot in Max. Um, just everything. I don't want to put a fucking title on nothing. You know what I'm saying? Karen's an important person in hip hop. And um, I'm a mess. You know, I, I can't believe what's going on. And to make things even worse, the fucking corners are there. The corners are there as I pull up, I parked everything. I wasn't even paying attention. I was like, okay, it's another van, whatever. The fucking corner was there. And they're taking Mac's body away. Mac's body was inside the corners, uh, van or truck or whatever the fuck it is. And they started pulling away from the house. And at that moment, I got chills, you know. At the same very time, I felt nauseous. I was angry. Um, I was sad. And in all in one instance, I didn't, I didn't know how to feel. Um, after a little bit, Max manager, who's a very old friend of mine, he walks out of the house. He's like, yo, man, I want you guys, you know, want to come inside. Let's just inside the house. And I walk inside the house with Karen and the house feels warm. Like it felt like Max's body was still there. Just, it just, it just felt like it was warm. It did. I don't know how to explain it, you know. I'm, I'm a spiritual person, right? I'm not necessarily the most religious person. I'm spiritual, you know. Um, the other day, someone's like, oh, why you went across? You got a Jewish star, you know. Like, I mean, I'm not necessarily particularly into one religion. Um, you know, I grew up as a Christian, and my mom was a Buddhist, and then, like, most of my other part of the family was Jewish, and it's just like, I'm just, I believe that there is some sort of God out there, right? And I believe all religions are, kind of tied together to one God. It's just my beliefs. But I am a spiritual person and I just felt like even though Max's body was gone, I felt like his spirit was still there. And it was just silent. And it fucked me up, you know, because one, this is a fucking true story about a legend in hip hop, you know. And um, I, I just still don't even know what to say. I'm just quiet. I'm obviously in a state of shock. And uh, there's, you know, there's a few of us in there, more than a few, you know, there might've been like six or seven of us in there. And we're all just kind of sitting there mourning him. And people are just quiet. People are crying. People are sniffling and just sad. And, um, you know, if you think about dead silence for a minute, it's kind of eerie. It's kind of weird. And just like, not on a, on a fucking meditation thing. It's just, it's just weird. And, um, I mean, Mac just passed away. It's just strange. And for like 14, the fuck, 15, 20 minutes, nobody said a word. It was just quiet. So I finally left and just still in disbelief. Um, I get home and I posted an RIP in memory of, um, it was like some expert, it was like some clips from, uh, some some little clips from uh, the reality show that he did, with, well, my reality show that, that uh, Mac did. And, um, you know, I just said a bunch of nice things because, you know, I do talk a lot of shit and uh, I don't like a lot of people. Um, I like Mac a lot. And uh, as I post that thing, um, a lot of people hit me up and George Lopez hits me. I didn't even hit him. I didn't even think to hit him or whatever. And George's like, oh, my God. His exact words like, oh, my God, Ben, I'm so sorry. I was just getting ready to head over to the video. Then I'm like, yeah, well, I mean, ain't no video no more, you know, and, and um. Mac had no enemies. He had no beef. He just fucking trusted the wrong piece of shit. And um, 
the dude who fucking gave him the fucking fucked up drugs, laced um, with that bullshit. And um, I'm just glad that piece of shit scumbag is going to sit in jail for a long time for giving Malcolm, you know, these pills with the fucking bullshit ass fentanyl in it. And it's just so fucking crazy because fentanyl's killing so many people. It's just so sad, man. He was so young, man, 26. It's, it's really crazy, man. Mac helped my brother out years ago promote a video game he was working on. And um, it was for uh, the PSP, the little mini PS uh, PlayStation thing. And my brother, you know, he had a little budget or whatever, but it wasn't anything crazy. But Mac was cool and he pushed it. It really sold a lot. Helped, helped my brother sell some video games, you know, people were fucking with it. And if I ever need anybody to talk to or need anything, I don't know, man. Mac was kind of like, just he always offered, you know, and he was busy as fuck. He might be in fucking Japan or Europe or Germany, where the fuck he was. And you know, I don't know, man. He was just such a good dude and he just, he was always willing to help and it's just fucked up, man. It's, it's still such a tragedy. It's such a huge loss to the world in general, not just like rap, you know. So I, I got to just say, you know, Malcolm McCormick, rest in peace, my brother. I miss you, my brother. Thank you for being a friend. Just an awesome dude. Um, let's have let's have a moment of silence for Mac. And by the way, man, fuck Donald Trump. Thank you to our friends at Quip for the endorsement. Everyone needs white teeth, and Quip will help you simplify your morning and evening with their electric toothbrush. When you think electric toothbrush, you may jump to thinking pricey luxury. That's because most brands focus on flashy, unnecessary gimmicks instead of building correct brushing habits. That's why Quip was invented, to help you brush better with only the features that matter. This toothbrush has a built-in two-minute timer that pulses every 30 seconds to remind you when to switch sides and help you clean your entire mouth evenly. Up to 90% of us don't brush for a full two minutes or don't clean evenly. Brush heads are automatically delivered on a dentist-recommended schedule every three months for five bucks. A friendly reminder when it's time for a refresh and to stay committed to your oral health. Quip is one of the first electric toothbrushes accepted by the American Dental Association. They're backed by over 25,000 dental professionals, and they have thousands of verified five-star reviews. I love Quip because it makes my life easier, and it keeps my teeth pearly white. That's why I love Quip, and why it's perfect for getting back into a routine. Quip starts at just $25, and if you go to getquip.com forward slash baller right now, you can get your first refill pack for free. That's your first refill pack for free at G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash baller. Yo, what's going on, man? You are listening to Behind the Baller. We are live in Seattle, motherfucking Washington, and I got this crazy, no, I'm playing, he ain't crazy, man. I got Quentin Jefferson from the motherfucking Seahawks in here. You already know I'm a Hawks fan. Yo, Quentin, what's good, man? Hey, hey, man. Appreciate you having me on, man. Appreciate yeah. you having me on. I appreciate it big time, <laughs> man. You know, like the more the more research I've done, I've been like, oh, shit, I fuck with this dude, man. Okay, okay. So let's get, let, let, let's just get right into it, man. So you from the Berg, right? Yes, sir. Pittsburgh, 412 all day, every day. 412, man. By the way, um, Today is a one-year anniversary of uh, Mac Miller's death. No doubt. Um, Mac is a good friend of mine. He represented Pittsburgh. He's a he's a good good kid. And uh, Mac, I miss you, bro. Love you, homie. And uh, that's crazy from Pittsburgh, man. That's that's, that's love. Um, so you 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 twenty six. Twenty six, man. You got four kids. Four. You fucking crazy, bro. <laughs> yeah, I got. I'm about to have a basketball team. That's my goal. <laughs> God, damn. What's what's the the breakdown as far as uh, what? Uh, my oldest, she's eight, and then I have twin girls. They're both uh, five years old, and then my my boy, he's uh, going to be two this year. So I mean, we hold busy. on. You got three girls. Three girls. Fuck, man. <laughs> damn, three bro. girls. So I got two boys, and then my youngest is a girl, and like mm-hmm. we weren't going to do the third. Yeah. Now, if my second was a girl. 
possibly would have been stopped. Stop. <laughs> so like, you know, but out here, so obviously they're out here. Um, do they go to private school or they go to regular school? Um, my oldest, she goes to regular school. Um, I mean, because, you know, the schools out here are great. They're great. You know, it's damn near a private school. No, it is. It's way and, better. Um, my twins, they're in a preschool, but it's like a little private preschool, you know. But, uh, yeah. I mean, they're, the school out here is crazy. It's crazy. God damn, bro. You're so lucky, bro. <laughs> bro, like private school in L.A., no bullshit. They probably range like 20 to 40 bands a year. Yeah, it's college. Each kid. Yeah, college tuition. No yeah. <laughs> People don't realize that. It's, it's fucking crazy. crazy, man. Yo, man, fuck. Let's just let's listen, man. Y'all don't even, well, most of you guys do know that I've owned charter seats since the uh, 2012 season. So I'm entering my seventh, uh, seventh season as a charter seat holder for the Seattle Seahawks. Um, you know, uh, my wife was born in Seattle. My father-in-law, her dad, has been a Seahawks fan since the organization started in 76. Um, it's an honor to finally have, you know what I'm saying, the first Seahawks guest on the show. And uh, let me ask you off top, man. How big is that 12th man, like that home field advantage for here? Dog, it's it's crazy, man. Um, I don't think people realize it's like something you can't even explain. You got experience, like when you're on the field and like you can't hear nothing. Yeah, like shit, dog. I'm trying to get the call from Bobby. I can't hear anything. We got to use hand signals and like literally, like the stadium is shaking. <laughs> yeah. third down. It's dope, man. I love it. I love being out here. It's been a blessing. You know, um, about five years ago, when Lob was like in its heat in its, in its prime, um, it was Monday Night Football, and y'all was playing the Saints. And I remember, um, am I tripping? It was Drew, right, Breeze? Yeah, so mm -hmm. he couldn't hear shit. Yeah. <laughs> and he was sitting there and he stopped. And it caused him to call timeout. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I sit there and it's like, yo, fuck. It ain't that many timeouts you already know. No doubt. And I'm thinking like, yo. So by the way, this is like, you know, my second year of having seats. I don't go, I only get to get four games a year because I can't come all the time. Yeah. When you hear that shit. It's crazy. <laughs> bro, man. It's crazy. It's really a home field advantage, like, no doubt. So, you know, so the defense has changed a lot. You know what I mean? People knew the LOB. They knew the Legion of Boom. You know what I'm saying? How do you think people should, you know, how should people feel about the defense now? Um, I feel like the, deep, the people should feel like almost how when they're coming up, you know, when Sherm, you know, Cam and Mike and all those guys are coming up. I mean, people really didn't know who they were. You know, they had to make a name for themselves. And uh, I think that's what we got here. We got a core of young, hungry guys who, like I said, out there trying to make a name for themselves. And, uh, man, I'm excited for this year. You know, you seen last year, nobody knew who we were, but we made the playoffs. No, nah, for real. I feel like we can even take a stepping stone and go farther this year. So, uh, man, I'm excited. You know what's crazy about last year is, is that the only two things that had y'all back was the Rams, right? Yeah. And the crazy part was – we was the only team. I say that we because, like, I mean, I'm, I'm on the same side as you. Who's the only fucking team that lost the Rams within a seven in, a, in the last four, in the last, in the fourth quarter, in the last minutes, and like on some bullshit? Yeah, man. Both, <laughs> but, hold on. Both games though. Both games fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's just some, it's just some, some, some bullshit. But you know, speaking of LOB, like, you got any stories about Earl Thomas, like Cam Chancellor? Or, Rich Sherman, anybody you want to share with? Like any Man, stories from them? Just you talking about dudes who like out there perfecting their craft. It's it's crazy. Like I speak on Earl, man. He's one of the most intense dudes I ever met in my life. Like really, Earl? like really lives, breathes football. You know, and just like all those guys, are just intelligent. And it's just like I know my first year in the league. It's just crazy. You walk into the locker room. It's like man, you see all these personalities. Like you see him on TV. You just see him in one locker room. It's like crazy. Like you know, Mike. That's my guy. He's one of the craziest dudes, <laughs> craziest dudes right. I ever met in my life. Right. Mike B. Man, it was just, man, like I say, it's one of them, like, you had experience for yourself. Just all those personalities in this, like, they're really like a family. Like, guys who loved each other, you know, are at kids' birthday events. And, like, it was pretty dope to be a oh, part of that. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. I'm going to be family. real with you. Like, the when the LOB was in its prime, there was nothing like it for such a long time, especially because, I mean, a lot of people don't know about, bro, I played cornerback, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. you know how I idolize Richard Sherman, just that whole, just the whole shit yeah. versus 49ers when he had the game, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and like, was like, yo, don't you ever put a motherfucker, <laughs> motherfucker on me? Like, and people, like, I ain't humble at all, you know, but I, I like that talking <laughs> shit. But the thing is, you're talking about dudes who are 6'4", you know, guys who are like 240 pounds, like, yeah. you're talking about old school linebacker size, these guys <laughs> are playing DBs. So when, you know, Cam, I don't know people hitting like Cam, you know no, what I mean? Nobody like, hitting like Cam, man. <laughs> it's crazy. No, 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 I mean, of course, obviously, you doing your thing. Um, where were you when you found out about uh, Jadavian Clowney, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and was joining the team. Like, how'd you feel about that? Um, I don't know. Where was that? I might have been at the crib, but um, I kind of had an inkling it was going to happen. But um, when it did happen, you know, uh, 
you know, you lose some guys, you know, you have relations with, you know, Mingo oh, shit, yeah. and Jacob, you know, uh, they're, I've been with them for the like, past two years. And uh, I mean, it's kind of sad to see them go, but I mean, it was also cool to have ha- add somebody new on, especially with his ability. And uh, like I said, JD, he's a good guy, real good guy, good guy. And I said, I'm glad they have him in the room and just excited to see what we do tomorrow. So it's going to be fun. You know, there's a lot of unknowns just because we're going to be out there. It's the first time out there together, but it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Fun. By the way, guys, it's uh, raining out here. This fucking thunder, <laughs> thunder and lightning and shit is crazy as a motherfucker. So, hey, Miles, I'm sorry, but if you have to edit the sound like this because it's fucking thunder and shit in the background. So, um, what's it like being coached for by, by uh, Pete Carroll? Pete, man, he's a he's a funny dude, man. Uh, it's probably the most laid back atmosphere in the NFL. You know, a lot of guys come here, they can't believe like we're out here doing this. We're shooting hoops, you really? know, <laughs> yeah, shooting hoops oh, and meetings and uh. You know, you might see anybody. You might see Drake at practice. And uh, it's just a cool atmosphere, you know. Um, so I love it. He always has some funny stories to tell. And um, he just lets you be you. You know, that's the biggest thing. I feel like that's what a lot of guys like playing for him because he's not trying to change you. He's not trying to make you into, into anything. He just lets you be you. I mean, he's a god, bro. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a steakhouse. It's, uh, Dan's, is it called? Fuck, what the fuck's it called? Not Joey's. I'm talking about, anyway, this is a steakhouse one time. I seen him and it pulled up. I don't want to say nothing to him. But it was so funny. It was like 17 motherfuckers fighting yeah. that don't even know him. <laughs> 17 dudes fighting to pay for his bill. That's crazy. And I'm like, ain't this some shit? This motherfucker, the new mayor of, of Seattle. <laughs> like, could you imagine, like, bro, I'm talking about a, like a, a steakhouse that got yeah. Wagyu and stuff. So you're talking about, you know, his bill going to be at least a few hundred. It's <laughs> like a dozen people fighting to pay for his bill. It's crazy. It's crazy, man. You got the um, juice. <laughs> what's it like uh, practicing in every day versus Russell Wilson? Oh, man. Russ. Just be ready to run. You never. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, for real though. Like I mean, you got to practice again. So I mean, so it's like, is he like? I mean, he's smaller than me. You yeah, know, he's so like, small. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, one thing is that he got a cannon, and that that man can move. Like you might think you have him. He's spinning out, running sideline to sideline. You chasing him. So so we definitely get some conditioning in. <laughs> I can tell you that. Oh, that's good, man. He treats you guys cool. He's cool. Yeah, man. He's a good dude. He's most one of the humblest dudes I know, and saying just he work hard. He's just all around. I can't say anything bad about him. You know, he's really right. a good dude. So we're talking about this, but I want, I'm just I'm asking you like how you feel like for real. Like yeah. how good do you think our offense and defense can be this year? I really think the sky's the limit. You know, if we run the ball like we did last year, like phew, it's over. Ain't nobody messing with us. You know, we got some big boys up front. I was big, surprised last yeah. year, bro, with the run game. Like yeah. I mean, no no offense. No, I feel you. <laughs> it was scary at I first. Miss, I miss Marshawn, you know, so yeah. like it was So you think like it's, it's for real, sky's the limit, yeah. you think like Cause Chris, man. I don't know if you've seen, you know, you, well, you see how Chris runs. He runs yeah. just as hard as Marshawn. That boy run that rock, it's just It's just different because every time I'm like, did he really just get six? Yeah. Did he really just get 11? Did he just break <laughs> it? Like, I don't know, bro. You know, it's weird because, again, it's like, it's hard to, like you said, you've been with people for two years. It's hard to see him go. Yeah. Think about the fans sometimes, right? It's different because you had a personal relationship, but I'm saying, like, you expect a certain out of something coming out of the backfield, right? Yeah. And I just see Marshawn, like, I'm like, fuck, <laughs> man. You know, like, I mean, I was a Raiders fan for 30 years. So imagine we went there. I was like, oh, man. I know he's from, he from the town. He's from yeah. Oakland. But, you know, anyway, so so who are the X factors on the Seahawks stand both, on both sides of the ball? I say the X factors on offense. Like I said, Chris, you know, and uh, I said the ball go through Russell. You know what I mean? Russell's that guy. You know, you got Big Dwayne holding up the O-line, getting them boys right. And Locke, Locke you know, he's going to make some plays downfield. Yeah. And on the D, you know, Wags. And think my boy KJ, who don't get enough credit, KJ. No, no offense, Wags, probably my favorite player, but I mean, but, but go on, yeah. Yeah, KJ Wright make that defense go. I mean, you're talking about a smart guy who puts everybody in the right place, going to make guys right. Like, that's one that I feel like one of the unsung heroes of that defense, man. I said, and you got my boy uh, B Mac in the back end, going to yeah. make some plays. I okay. <laughs> said, you got my boy Trey and uh, my boy Shaq on the corners. I mean, like I said, D line. You got me. You got JD. You got Puna Four. My big, my boy, my big dogs in the middle. Like we gonna eat, man. <laughs> so, so who you think's like the like? Okay, like far as like we got rookies now, right? Yeah. This year, who you think is a uh, gonna gonna be a breakout <laughs> player? Man, my guys, uh, Cody Burton from uh, from Utah. Yeah, I don't know, dude, but yeah, man, you gonna know. <laughs> okay, this boy, he he's a dog. Like just straight, just smart. I mean, football instincts, man. He's just. Flying around the field, man. He's one of them boys, like you said, you want you want behind you. And uh, like I said, you you might not know him now, but by the end of the year, you're going to hear his name. Okay, okay. So, what, like, as far as, like, what are your expectations for the season? Like, like for real, like, for the team and for the season? Like, what do you think we're going to do this year, man? Win the division. <laughs> Easy, God. win the division. My God. So, you do that, everything Hell takes yeah. care of business. For real, you know what I mean? And, like, it's so funny because uh, I – um. 
I could only make it to a few games because I'm, I'm on like this little washed up tour where I'm going like <laughs> jewelry, this, that, and the third and everything else, right? So like, you know, um, obviously, you know, ever since the LOB shit, the 49ers have been become a rival of ours. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We hate the I hate, <laughs> listen, I've always, I've never liked, like there's three teams I don't fuck with. It's the Niners, I fuck the Patriots, and I can't fuck with the Cowboys, right? <laughs> and like, you know, we don't really play the Patriots, but like, you know, the, the Cowboys and the, and, the, and the Niners, I just don't fuck with. And, um, but you know, NFC's crack. Like, how do you feel? What's it like playing in the NFC? Man, you got to come prepare every week, you know. Even the Niners last year, they didn't have a, a great record, but we know when we play them, it's yeah. like, it's, it's a it's, different type yeah, of, yeah. It's different. Like, they're going to give us their best game. Like, we played them, I think, at their home. Like, it was like the Super Bowl to them. Especially yeah. seeing, they I mean, yeah. they beat us. But they were partying like and they know, won the and, Super Bowl. And you know, I'm going to tell you something real quick. All them bitch ass. Because <laughs> if you see, like, how much I talk on my page yeah. and the Niners fans, like, one time I remember we was, I was out here and uh, I went to a Niners game and we yeah. came back. It was like three years ago. We came back in the fourth and won, right? Mm -hmm. And um, my seat's 40-yard line, row D, so right in front behind the opposing team <laughs> so like you know the Niners the Niners families behind whatever yeah. and I'm talking shit to everyone right <laughs> and like the next day I'm at the pike getting some clown chowder and this guy's like hey man can I get a pick with you and I wasn't even paying attention I was like yeah, yeah I'm just gonna pick and he wearing a Niners jacket oh, I'm like oh we washed y'all man <laughs> we washed the fuck out y'all he goes hey bro I'm not gonna lie to you bro like my life is this team like I don't even really he goes I don't make a lot of money I flew here to watch the game yeah. and he's like, for, you to, for you to talk like that on social media you know I was like hey bro you got to grow some balls, man. Like, that's what it is. You know, y'all could do the same thing. So, like, when the Niners won, I turned all my comments off, bro. Oh, you know man. what I'm saying? All right, no, they're getting you hell. By the way, um, I'm going to go to the game in uh, in Santa Clara, 11-11, uh, November 11th. I'm going to check that shit out. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's going to be funny. <laughs> Let's get into some funny shit, man. Let's get into some... Um, Man, what happened when that motherfucking Jacksonville Jaguars <laughs> in Jacksonville when that Jaguars oh, fan spoke out like and, and you know what I'm saying? Like what happened, dog? Dog, it was crazy. First of all, I shouldn't even got ejected. I got ejected for no reason. You know, they were trying to take a knee and you don't gotta let them take a knee, you know. So right. I, I played it like a regular play. So yeah. uh man, I get ejected, I'm running off, and uh I just see something fly across my face. I'm like, like, what the hell? You mm -hmm. know? And then shit just started. it was like rain and shit. People start throwing shit. And um uh, man, I just wild out. I seen like I, when I turned no, back. I, you. I, yeah, to, I seen the one guy human, who threw. Bro. Yeah, I seen the one guy who threw the shit. So you know what I mean, I went over to confront him. You know, I ain't have no security, nothing, nobody. So I went over to confront him. I said, hey, "Like, what's good?" Yeah. And then you know him. You know, motherfucker, I'll fuck your mother, da da da. Oh, bro, they shit, saying said big, that? bro. They saying we can't hear it on TV. Yeah, they saying crazy shit to me. So it's you like you headbutt that motherfucker out and knock bro, his ass out. I was, like, I was just, <laughs> you see what I was trying yeah, to no, do? Yeah, no, I, I saw that. You know, yeah. but I mean, it's just one of those two. You know, a lot of people think you know when you pay a ticket that. I don't know. They think this is the zoo where you can just you know throw shit or do whatever. But like, nah, fuck I mean, that. No, that's not that's not the case. You know, I'm a human. I'm a man. You know, I got kids, and you're not about to disrespect me. Like, period, not point blank. Though. You know, like I don't care what nobody say. Like, if you you don't know what it was like unless you were in that moment. You know, because a lot of people had a lot to say on the internet. But I'm like, you weren't in that moment in that situation. You know, that's what I hate the the critics. Yeah, and then especially the internet critics. Yeah, especially in the heat of a game. Like, yeah. like we was battling that game. You know. It's no, just, that's just some that's some punk ass shit. Yeah, man. Um, did did they fine you? I forgot. Did they? How much was the fine? I know originally it was like forty forty five thousand because they they fined me for getting ejected and then they fined me for the incident. But uh, the that one got like uh, retracted because they shouldn't even ejected me, and then uh, they reduced the the other one to like it was like twenty thousand. It was still a lot, you know. But uh, they had to find me something. But it was the point of fact, like you know, the guys do stuff. The security's there, but they weren't even doing anything. They were just yeah, that's some punk ass yeah, shit. They were just letting the people do whatever they I want. I mean, there is home, whole field of advantage <laughs> and whatever. And like, you know, I've been on the field and yeah. stuff, right? But at the end of the day, let's say we playing against fucking, um, we playing against Cincinnati tomorrow, right? Yeah. And some of the 12s get out of control and whatever. Security got to go look out. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Be like, yo, listen, let's keep it classy. You know, whatever else. Mm -hmm. People talk their shit, but throwing shit now yeah, come on it's different you know like <laughs> like they were tripping like i said and that was the whole the whole fact like i was like man i'm a i'm a player i'm part of that's like that's like me some coming up in your shop and somebody like uh slapping your ass or something you you retaliate and then you know when you get fired for protecting yourself you know your yeah, job no, that's, that's the you know your job should you know I mean, should protect you and that's how at I felt. the same time you know? yeah i mean it's <laughs> it's a lot <laughs> bro you know there's so much controversial shit with with the nfl right now yeah. in fact we will go into that in a minute but um actually no fuck that I, I had no intention even asking you, mm. but like, what are your opinions on Jay Z doing this partnership with with the with the NFL? Um, I know right now I really don't have 
an opinion, you know, because uh, I don't, I don't, I want to see what all yeah comes of it before I speak on or have any type of opinion on it. But uh, I mean, just seeing his body of work, I don't, I don't see why I would like anybody would question anything he ever does, you know. Uh, I mean, he, the philanthropy he does what? Like, <laughs> so I'm like, I don't, I don't, I'm not questioning anything. No, he I mean, does, he's done you know? so much good. Yeah, bro. it's like you can't say anything. <laughs> I mean, not just so much good. I mean, bro, he's really gone motherfuckers out of jail. Yeah, he's taking care of like. Think of any prominent black person that's young. He's offered to take care of their legal. And yeah. you know how much legal fucking fees cost? Crazy. Um, <laughs> the reason why I'm tripping is because you know, as far as like the black community, you know, they're all like, oh fuck that, we gonna cancel him or whatever. And I'm yeah, just like, crazy. yo, listen, and I know. Um, <laughs> Eric was uh, tripping on it, right? He made a yeah. big rant about it. But the thing is this, like, someone says some good shit too. It's like, hey, bro, you complaining, but at the same time, you still suiting up playing ball. Like, no people doubt. people out there getting <laughs> their check. I'm just, it's a fucking tough situation, Yeah, right? it is. It is, you know. I was just curious, man. Um, who is the biggest joker? Like, who's the biggest motherfucking jokester on, on the Seahawks? Oh, man. Right now? <laughs> I've been dying to ask that question, yeah. man. I'll say in my years, the bigger, the funniest, I say the funniest dude I ever came in contact with, had, hands down, Mike B. Man, that man. Really? Is, bruh, hilarious. Like, Damn. Talking about no filter. He, oh, for <laughs> no real? Filter. Okay, I like him then. Yeah, Shit. He the know? funniest motherfucker I ever, I feel like, ever played with, man. He's crazy. Literally, legit crazy. <laughs> so then, okay, like on the team, mm. like, do you have any good friends that are on, on the Seahawks? Yeah. Uh, I mean, the whole D line, man, we, let's say we a brotherhood, you know, J. Reed. Uh, Brandon Jackson, my dog Puna, my dog Big Al said, even JD just getting here, uh, Ziggy. Like I said, we uh, man, we real close knit. Like, like I said, we literally like brothers, and I feel like that helps you on the field. You know, you gotta be, you gotta have a, a bond with those guys. Like, I feel like that helps you. Make it makes you want to fight it, for somebody. You know, it, for people <laughs> who never played sports before, yeah, football's a big fucking. You know, what I'm saying like this, 65 dudes who, who, who suit up. It's like, yeah. um, it's a big. It's, it's you know, basketball too. Is but it's like. I knew that if I didn't get along with all my DBs, yeah. like, I mean, I try to get along with everybody, but like the DBs, we really got to come together. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, so that's, that's dope. But I mean, um, besides on the Seahawks, you got any other friends in the NFL? Man, I got a bunch of dogs, bro. Just even my high school. I went to, uh, I don't know if you know, I went to Willing Hills High School and uh, man. We Willing Hills and, listen. In, it's in Pittsburgh. Oh, okay. Pittsburgh. We, uh, breed, we breed athletes, you know. We had, we had Gronk. We had, Gronk went, yeah. to Will went to your high school? Yeah, Jason Taylor. Wait, uh, so Gronk is one year older than you, right? Nah, he's a he's a few years older. Than oh, me. A few years. yeah. Um, so we had Jason Taylor, um, Steve Breston. Like it's a, it's a, we breed them, you know. So I had a bunch of homeboys in the NFL, even guys I met through college and just throughout the playing, you know. So I got a bunch of friends, a bunch of friends. You know what? I just realized something, man. It's crazy because Pittsburgh. When you think about this shit, man. <laughs> Yo, AB Antonio Brown. Like, oh, what man. you what you think about this whole situation? This shit crazy, right? Yeah, man. It's crazy. It's definitely crazy, man. But uh. I don't know, man. I like Antonio Brown, man. Hey, dude, he he, <laughs> he done DM me a bunch of times for jewelry, yeah, certain things. I, like I didn't him, have man. time to get no custom shit for him, and he hit me. He was cool. I just was like, see, the thing is this, man, and this is what's fucked up. And people that that have been following me for a long time, they know, like, I don't like sometimes. I'll I'll, I'll say something like, yo, I can't stand that motherfucker, right? And yeah. they'd be like, yo, you do the same shit, man. How the yeah. fuck you can't like that? Like, because I expect better out of them. You know what yeah. I mean? And like. You no, know, AB was was on some shit with this whole this whole last week has been like dramatic, right? Yeah. And then he went and unfollowed fucking um. Why the fuck am I drawing a blank? What's quarterback from Oakland? Um, uh, Derek Carr. Yeah, Carr. He unfollowed Carr. <laughs> and I'm like, man, you a clown, bro. Whatever. But then people were like, motherfucker, you unfollow people. I'm like, bro, listen, I'm talking about me. I'm a regular dude. This is the fucking you know dude who 1500 plus yards in the fucking yeah. receiving. So. Do you think he's gonna put in work this year on, on the Patriots? Oh man, from what I heard from people, guys who played with him, like he one of the hardest working guys, like period. Like that's one thing you can't question his work ethic. You know, you're talking about a guy who was drafted sixth round and then turned himself into who he is today. Like no, I, was, I feel I, like you know what I mean. I think he's gonna. He I'm gonna saying ball. though, with, with with Edelman and with Gordon, like you, you think like I mean, is he gonna? Do I you think, think he's gonna he's, ball? <laughs> really? Yeah, Damn. I think he's gonna ball. <laughs> one thing I didn't really think about was the fact that like okay, you defense right? Yeah. I can't say too much about offense. I played offense in high school, but it's different when you get to, to college and then yeah. obviously the pros, right? Now, the double team factor, yeah. who the fuck are they? You know what I'm saying? You fucked up. All three of them is, if they had Gronk, forget about yeah. it. But like, I hate <laughs> the Patriots, crazy. right? But what I'm saying is, I don't think he'll get 15 because it's just too many receivers. I think he'll break 1,000 yards, though. I think he'll. Oh, yeah. He's definitely going to break 1,000 yards, man. They gonna, I'm going to see how it, it, it goes down, but I think he's going to do his thing, man. Hopefully not when they, we see him in the Super Bowl, you know. I hope he don't do nothing then. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, um, 
What's it like living in Seattle? You know what I'm saying? Like being an athlete, being being like you know being the home because you know that this this is a real football town. Yeah. They talk about top five football towns in the United States. No doubt. So what's it like? Let's look like being an athlete here and then having to travel all over the country and stuff. Oh man, it's super dope being here. You know, uh, like I said, just the Seahawks. Just you get so much love. You know, anywhere you go, and just the culture is super dope. And um, and just uh, being an athlete, period. You know, it's uh, it's it's pretty dope. You know, you get to go every week or every other week. You're in a new city. You get to see things. Uh, I'll say the toughest thing is just being away from your family. You yeah, know? that's the hardest like part. Like I say, you got a wife and. Uh, Four kids at home, and uh, shout out to my wife Nadia. She holds down the fort, you know, because I said majority of the time I'm gone, even yeah. during the week. Like I'm up at five a.m. and I don't get home till like eight a.m. Yeah. eight p.m. You know, so I might not see my kids when I wake up or when I come home. They might be asleep. So uh, man, it's yeah, like it's even like, like, like I, le- I left <laughs> um, the other day. I left the house, yeah. and um, I caught a red eye, and then. Um, I didn't get to see my kids because I was taken off right before they went to bed. Mm-hmm. And then, or I'm sorry, they went to bed. And then when I, when I came back, they was already in school. Yeah. Then I left the next day. I mean, bro, today, today from LA to here was my 71st flight this year. I'm probably gonna do 100 flights this year. That's crazy. How many flights do you guys usually do, you think, in a year? Um, I'll say probably, cause probably like half our games are away games. So probably like, like eight. Probably like around so eight, 16 eight. flights, so there and back. So that's... Okay, that's not that bad. Basketball yeah. way worse. Yeah, like it's, that's crazy. They got a shit ton of games. <laughs> um, what are your favorite travel? What, what, what are your go-to travel items? Like, what do you must must have have things for travel? Man, I gotta have my headphones, man. <laughs> period. I gotta have my iPad so I can watch my Martin. And uh, what kind of headphones do you use? I mean, I got the um, either my AirPods. I actually got a bunch of headphones. I got yeah. AirPods. I got the Bose. I got the Beats. The like the sport ones. Uh, right. I mean, you gotta have options. You gotta have a bunch. I just got all case too. <laughs> But shout out to Master Dynamic, man. Uh, that's KD's company. Okay. They they sponsored the, the thing, and um, it's some dope ass shit. Uh, dope. What was I gonna say to you? Uh, what's your favorite thing about living in Seattle? Um, man, the food. I don't think people realize the food. Oh my is god, crazy. Man. <laughs> well, you know what though, I. Do you know a good soul food restaurant out here or no? That's one thing I ain't really. Uh, I guess I would say. Have you ever been to June Babies? Nah. It's like a. Uh, it's like soul food, but kind of like a bougie soul food. <laughs> where, 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 like, what area is it in? Um, I know it's near like. Uh, I want to say near like almost close to Dub. Okay, know. so like, is it is it in the U Village or is it just near like? Um, I honestly don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, man, bro, you trust me, man. You know what I'm saying? My relatives live here, but it's different. Like, yeah. I had no idea that, I mean, I don't, like, Korean food has gotten so much better here because the population of people, yeah. Korean people in uh, Tacoma and shit. Mm-hmm. And, like, but no, man, think about the bar scene here at Capitol Hill and, like, yeah. just how chill everyone is. And then, like, the seafood is ridiculous. Man, crazy. And, like, um, <laughs> there's just there's just all kinds of shit, right? Like, let me ask you a question, man, about Seattle. Like, do you think Seattle, I mean, you've been here long enough. Like, yeah. do you think Seattle should have an NBA team? Oh, no doubt, man. Just like I said, you look you look at the football culture. I don't see why not like an NBA team like they won't have the same culture, you know. Like you got people who are who love their sports and support like to back them. So I don't see why there shouldn't be an NBA team coming here. You know, it'd be crazy. Dope. They need to hurry up. Yeah, for real. That, that Ramal Key Arena really got me <laughs> depressed. Real, like though. they fucked up. They should have had that because like you know, like um I mean, I never really cared for the Supersonics, you know what I mean? But like my, but my pop, my my stepdad, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, my father-in-law, he fucked with a team really heavy, you know what I'm saying? Then when they moved to OKC, he wasn't like everyone else. They're like, man, fuck them. Yeah. He actually followed OKC, you know, that's just what he did. But uh, anyways, did you play any other sports growing up? Like, did, did you? Uh... Uh, I hooped a little bit, but uh, man, I knew, I knew that was going to be my sport. <laughs> I kind of knew football. If I was going to make it in a league, it was going to be definitely be the football. So, man, I kind of stuck right. with it. I've been playing since I was six years old. I mean, do you watch baseball or, ba- or basketball at all? No, nah, man. I, I, yeah. I honestly don't watch any sports. Like, when I'm not doing football, I don't watch any sports. Damn, for real? For real? Yeah, I try to just tune it out. <laughs> bro, are you serious? Yeah. You don't fuck with basketball at all? Nah. <laughs> wow, bro. That might be the first I never heard, especially because you play, you know what I'm saying? You fuck. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, okay, the Rams, right? Yeah. They're on a, in our division, right? Plus, you played on the squad, right? Mm-hmm. And um, they made the Super Bowl. Like, what was it like watching them play and lose? Man, I told you I couldn't even I couldn't watch it. Especially, <laughs> especially the, man, I already knew the result. <laughs> I already knew the result. I already knew the pages. I didn't know. I didn't know until I was like, yo, come like, on, man. man. I said, well, I watch it, man. Tom Brady about to win another one. <laughs> Fuck, bro, and I hate that motherfucker, man. Oh, man. <laughs> You know what I'm saying, like, but like, uh, let, let's let's take it back to college, right? Yeah. So you went to University of Maryland, right? Yes, sir. Terrapins, right? Yes, sir. Um, 
man, bro, like what 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 happened? Like when you when you was at when you were college, you had like, man, man, <sighs> was it? Uh, it was actually right before I went to college. Uh, man, got into a fight, got wired, my mouth wired up, so uh, I couldn't even go to college. But when I was my original year, man, I was. But you had a scholarship, right? Yeah, I had a scholarship still, Jesus but uh, man, I couldn't go. I, had, I was wired up, so I was. Uh, what position did you play in college? I play uh, like I play every same here, everything like three technique. I play uh, DN, and uh, they, they'll put me wherever. Okay. And uh, yeah, I was at working at Best Buy <laughs> instead of, instead of being in college. God damn, bro! <laughs> you was working at Best Buy in Pittsburgh. Yeah, Best Buy, Moreauville, man. Shout out to them. <laughs> you want me asking like, what was they paying you per hour then? Dog, I might have been getting like. Like ten bucks an hour. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, Jesus man, it was crazy. Christ, man, it was crazy. And now you like a rising star in the NFL. Like, yes, sir. any advice to people who are about to, you know, uh, about overcoming adversity? You know what I'm saying? Like, man, I would say just with adversity, man, it, uh, it it's just about how you see it. You know, within life, anything that's worth getting, you know, you're gonna have to go through some shit. And it's, uh, I feel like it really, you have to embrace it. You have to see the positive in it because I feel like adversity really molds you and gets you prepared for life, you know, cause life is gonna be ups and downs, but it's about, like I said, how you respond to that. And uh, if, like I said, if you have a dream, don't let anything deter you from that. Like you're gonna get knocked down, but it's about, can you, are you gonna get up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> are you gonna see the positives in that? And uh, I mean, I, through my whole life, that's been my thing, man. Just trying to see a negative and then try to find the positive in it and just keep it moving, man. Man, bro, I, like people, you hear what he said, man. You know, you see a lot of negativity and. You just try to see some power. You see a little light. Yeah. And when I say light, I, I, you know, you look for that light and all that darkness, right? And you try to look for that for that positivity to to motivate you to keep going. Yeah, no you know doubt. what I'm saying? If you just see all black. And the funny thing is I've been there where I've been in tunnels. Like, it's just all black. Ain't no light. Ain't no positivity. <laughs> like, you got to go and create some. <laughs> no doubt. Like, and, no and doubt. imagine some. You know what I'm saying? So, like, um, if I'm not wrong, like, you tore your ACL, right? Like, Oh, yeah, man. Uh, what was it my my junior year? I, I I tore my ACL, and this is the same year I had my my twin daughters. So oh, yeah, fuck. I'm in college. I got three kids, torn ACL. I'm like, man, I got bro, like yeah, <laughs> I gotta make some shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, like okay, people don't get it. I don't give a fuck if you billionaires, if you're a millionaire, yeah. whatever. And but when you're not, or even if you like, listen, man, we live in a weird world today, right? Yeah. People have their priorities wrong. Um, like me, for instance, right, like people like i'm not gonna go buy a 10 million dollar house because i just feel like i might have to worry about how i live then at that point right <laughs> no i'm being real right yeah. like like i think about my kids a lot right and i think no like doubt. okay well of course they could have their meals and they can eat you know wear regular clothes or whatever but which is that's what they do now my kids ain't like over the top mm -hmm. but don't that shit like especially because you had them young with me yeah. i'm older so it even makes me i'm even more like shook like i'm no offense i'm like a little more woke about like okay i know like you know it's tougher when you're younger, you could think about it, but like, did you feel worried? Like, damn, I gotta provide for the kids. Like, I gotta. Yeah, no doubt. Cause, like, you know, you know how it is. Like, when you have them kids, they're they're hungry. You yeah. know, they want to be fed. They don't they yeah. don't care that. Like I said, that my ACL was torn. Yeah. They don't care that. Like I said, I'm down in the dumps. That all they know is, you know, they're a baby. They want food, and so it's my job as a man to go provide that for my family. So, uh, I mean, that's what drove me. You know, I was like, man, there's no way I might have these kids. You know, and they're not gonna be like be provided the things they need and the necessities and even with my wife, you know, so I was like, man, I'm gonna make this happen somehow. But your wife was real supportive, obviously, <laughs> man, right? I said, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for her, man, because like God, I said, man. I was at a low point and she, I mean, she kept me right. So like I said, you had guys out there, man, you find you a good woman, you you hold on to her. You know, um, <laughs> that's real talk. That's um, real. When things started taking off, uh, you know, I've been a jeweler for 14 years, right? And uh, we hit a really bad recession, if you remember, and it was the worst anyone's ever seen in our lifetimes. Our parents never seen them this yeah. bad. And um, my wife was, she had a bikini line and was doing cool. The only thing was, I was like, hey babe, like, I'm about to be on the road, like, you know, like, can you do this shit, like, on like a different level or whatever? And she's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, mm. you know, like, this is my dream to keep this going. I love yeah. bikinis and I was like, fuck man like how do you tell your wife to stop doing her dream so we could have a family yeah. and let me do what i gotta do to hold down a family and she's like you know what man do you and she never complained or anything yeah, you know man. unless i give like, like we'll get into an argument or some shit yeah, you know. and she's like <laughs> yo i gave my dreams i'm like man stop all that shit you know blah blah but no you got to find someone who have your back because especially you got kids with them yeah and you, you are married right I'm yeah like, man okay yeah man. man so that's just some crazy shit like so um you play 16 games in a season, right, in mm -hmm. the NFL. And then, like, we got so many fucking preseason games and shit. Like, 
I think it's too many to tell you the yeah. truth, man. Motherfuckers get so like, <laughs> what's that like for conditioning wise? Like, what's your like? Man, I don't even know if there's any way to train for it. You gotta literally. Just That's what I was gonna ask you. Yeah. Like, you gotta, like, <laughs> you gotta do it on the off season. Yeah. How heavy are you training? Um, man, literally, when the season ended this past year, I I might have took. Uh, I think I took like a, a month off, and then. I might not even took a month off. <laughs> I think I might have took like a, like a week or two off, and then I'm right back at it. You know, because uh, people don't realize, because even in like uh, like March, we start up with like OTAs and everything. So uh, it's like I like just staying in shape. I hate trying to get back into That's shape. That's the worst. You know, it's the worst ever. You know, and yeah. uh, I mean, it's it's a it's your year round grind. You know, you have to keep your body in shape. You have to make sure you're doing your maintenance, so you know you don't get like little injuries and everything. It's a, I mean, it's just it's a, a yearly grind. You know, just make sure you're putting the right food, the right nutrition in your body. You know, it's you have to be damn, conscious. Even at of your size, fuck. I feel yeah, like you man. just eat what you want to. God damn. Yeah, <laughs> Shit, man. So um um, let me pause for one second. Fuck, I forgot I was gonna say, I was gonna say something different. Um. As far as Seattle goes, right? Mm. Like, you know what, man? I know you got to keep it political, but like, do you want to retire here? Is this the team you want to retire with? Or? Man, be honest. I mean, I love it here, but I mean, the, wherever the money's calling. So right. if it's here, sure, I would yeah. love to stay here. Like I said, I got a family to take care of. But uh, honestly, me and my wife actually talked about this. No matter like what happens, I honestly think about making this like home base, you know, because I say true. I really say I love Seattle as far as like I, t I told you, like the schools. I love the schools. Right. For, like my my daughter in kindergarten learning how to code. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm from Pittsburgh. Like my schools are. are no, I mean, shitty, even in Beverly you know? Hills. And I, <laughs> no, I'm being real with you. Yeah. In Beverly Hills, I'm not learning how to code. Let's yeah. get serious, man. Come and on. like right now, it's like she's in third grade and this is what her passion. She's passionate about coding. I'm like, man, I don't think she'll get exposed to that anywhere else. So it's like, right. I love it here just because so many opportunities, so many different things. So it's like, if I'm not here, I feel like I'm still be here, you know? Right. No, I just say that because like, okay, like we'll get ads and stuff, right? Yeah. And it might be like, who fucking knows? <laughs> but like, let's say for instance, someone's like, hey man, we'll give you $10,000 $10, an episode mm. for you to shout out this booty cream. And I'm like, nah, bro, like it ain't gonna happen. Like, <laughs> you know, at a certain point, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think you want to go to some, you know, a fucking, who the fuck was a uh, two in, in, in 12 last year? Who like, Oh, like the Browns or something? Yeah. Well, I mean, now they might they might <laughs> yeah, fuck might. around and do some work this year, bro. <laughs> yeah, you know, no doubt, no but doubt. you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, like, no to a certain extent, mm -hmm. like the check is cool, but you want to go to a, a you know and always be you know in a contending team and everything. Oh yeah, right? no like, doubt. If anything, I'll say um, because you know I'm from I'm from Pittsburgh. I'm from the, like all my family's on the East Coast. I would love to be close to my family so they could see me play. I mean, we're going to Pittsburgh uh, actually next week, so yeah, so this they, probably yeah. be the first time I, my family see oh, me playing. Dope, like, man. are you gonna bring your your, your kids and everything? Oh yeah, yeah, everybody's going. Oh, Man, that's the going. best, bro. Yeah, so it'll be super dope. But I say I would love just to be close to them so they could, you know, just see me. You know, even if it drive a little bit, like it's hard for them to. They can't just drive all the way, you know, across yeah. the country to come see me. You so know, they, I never really thought about that yeah. that much. We really don't even like. We really don't go out like that. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. But that's dope though, because because Pittsburgh is gonna be. Damn, you have you have a lot of family. Yeah, it's gonna be jumping. I mean, you got a lot of family, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> Fuck, you had all the tickets. Yeah. I remember man, I, I forgot. I told him, man, hey, y'all might have to get y'all on your own. I got my, I know I got oh. my parents yeah. and my, my immediate family. I mean, I'm going to see if I can get some more, but I ain't about to break my back. <laughs> I know? remember I asked Cam Chancellor for some extra tickets, and um, he had told me, he was like, bro, I, I got you this game. But look, just know, do you know how many motherfuckers <laughs> ask me for tickets? I'm like, bro, I get it. He's, he's like, listen, man. If you had no paper, mm -hmm. I, I was like, damn, man, why everyone think like, you know, I like, but, but I get it because Manny Pacquiao, when he fought Mayweather, mm -hmm. bro, I thought this was a lie. I had to get four different people. Manny Pacquiao's Filipino. You obviously mm -hmm. know um, my wife is part Filipino. She's Filipino. Well, she's Filipino. Fuck it. Yeah. Her family, they real proud. I had to find out from four different people that know Manny. He had to get 200 hotel rooms in Vegas. Bro, two... Okay, did you see what the tickets were for May Mayweather Pacquiao? So the ring size was anywhere from fifty to a hundred thousand a ticket, right? Yeah. The nosebleeds had to be five bands, right? Uh, Let's say even three bands, two bands. Bro, he got two hundred people tickets, and then he got two hundred rooms. Man, he paid for all of that shit. And I'm like, bro, you tripping? Bro, he played. He he fought for free. Yeah. <laughs> he, he he um he even a uh, someone who I know like kind of know him, but he's like somewhat popular in the Filipino community, yeah. man, he got his room for him and his tickets. That's crazy. Like that's a blood, hey. No, that's, that's dope. I'm just yeah. saying like, 
you tripping. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you got a lot of kids, man. Yo, the most important question of the motherfucking night. Oh, we're going to win it all this year, dog. And that's always the goal. <laughs> that's always the goal. <laughs> that's, always, that's what we out there working for. Oh, man. You know, the best part about it is I've been a contender three or four, three times for championship rings, right? Um, I ain't going to say his name, but my boy, he's one of the very few allies I have in the joy business. He had a deal with Lakers way back in the day. So like they, he had, a, he had an in with them, mm. right? And then um, I was up to make the Golden State, Champ Golden State Warriors rings. And uh, the competitor that I was up against, he paid for all the rings. Mm. It's like $300,000, dog. And I was like, bro, you go ahead and take that shit, right? <laughs> yeah, you got it. So I know if we, yo, if we take it, you already know you got to put a bid in. I'm going to have to text. Right. <laughs> I'm going to text everyone on the fucking team. Be like, hey, bro, tell Pete, tell everybody, tell... Shit, rest in peace, Paul Allen. But tell everybody, man, we, I said, listen, Ben Ball, I got to make them championship yeah, you rings. you make some crazy. I ain't know. You know what I'm saying? So, look, yo, real quick, just something on, on the side end, like on a, on a thing. I, I just heard this through some homies and through some of my fans, you know, some of my, some of my followers. They hit me up to say, hey, man, uh, he a big sneakerhead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's that oh, yeah. shoe of you, man? I'm a, uh, I actually got a small. I'm like a 12, 13. Oh, okay. So, you could get some kicks. I mean, the funny thing is, for everyone who don't know, y'all know I've been a sneakerhead for over 20 something years. Every single time a rare shoe came out, size 12 and 13 is the hardest to go. Everyone Man, thinks it's what? size 8 because the Chinese people wear a size 8. <laughs> but you got to understand, at the end of the day, there's still hundreds and thousands of pairs of size 8 made. Not everyone makes a 13 and 12 like 13. One. Yeah. <laughs> like one or two. <laughs> so you got to remember, Kobe Bryant sometimes won't spare $1. He'll give a fuck. Cost 10000 he go get it. So he has. But then PJ Tucker is just out of his fucking mind. Yeah. Motherfucker buy everything rare. Yeah. So, you know. That's crazy. So, size 13. Okay, so I'm going to keep that in mind. I got a lot yeah. of sneaker plugs, bro. So, Appreciate that. what's your favorite sneaker of all time? Man, actually, it's um because my homeboy actually made me my uh, my cleats tomorrow. I'm going to wear it's the, the Atmos uh, Air Max one. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, the elephant print ones. Yeah. Man, those, I bro, love I can't believe you know. No, no offense. I'm just saying, like, that's because Atmos is a Japanese store in Japan. Yeah. And I, you know, I know the, I know the homie, homie was the, uh, the founder. I like, almost as fresh as fuck. Yeah. And those animal prints, you know, I don't know if you know, you know what bear bricks are. Mm -hmm. Those toys I carry. Yeah. Whatever. Atmos made the bear brick of that print, that yeah. animal print. So you have cleats like that. Yeah, I'm gonna get fine tomorrow, but it's worth. Oh, it. that's dope. That's <laughs> dope <laughs> as <worth> fuck. <laughs> so what? Uh, like, what's the what's the most expensive shoe in your collection? Um. Most expensive, I, I don't know. Cause I actually, I don't mean it's one of them. I, I want to man. If I can't, if I can't like, get it or know somebody can get it for me, I don't know. I ain't really, ain't, I ain't about to spend nothing crazy for. Okay, I ain't so about the PJ Tucker. It. But my favorite shoe, like one of my, well, one of my favorites is the, um, the Galaxy phones. Like, cause uh, it was one of those like that's a great shoe. Yeah, bro. like when I was a uh, when I was in like high school and uh, or actually it might have been my my first year of college. I was like, man. That's like one of my grails too, as well. So I said that's one, another one of my favorite pair of shoes. I'll I, I tell you a funny story. So um, I uh, I used to work for Nike, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was a big when I say big, I was a really big sneakerhead, like one yeah. of the one of the probably top ten in the world, not the country, the world that was known for sneakers. I became a millionaire from selling my collection. Mm -hmm. So how Nike paid me was through sneakers mostly. I didn't get a great salary for doing marketing with yeah. them, but um, I got into it with them, mm -hmm. and I was like, man, fuck Nike, fuck this shit, I ain't fuck when I'm boom or whatever. They was on some hater shit, and which fine, they're a huge company, and they didn't see, well, they did, but they didn't, and then that lifestyle culture became so big, like yeah. that real community. So, I didn't wear Nikes for seven years, which is a long time. Yeah. Like, I only wore Vans, and I didn't wear no Nikes. Right when the Galaxy Foams came out, it's the same time the Yeezy two, the Yeezy twos came out. Yeah. Someone from Nike sent me the Yeezy twos, and I said, "Hey, bro, so many sent me them Galaxies because the motherfuckers <sighs> is fire." And they also made like 13, 14, 15 of the Galaxy. They made 17 because yeah. it was an NBA shoe, you know. But that's dope. Okay, so um, we was talking about it earlier. Um, what's the black dude? Uh, Paris. Yeah. He on Soulmates. You fuck with Soulmates at all? You're good oh, yeah. Them's my guys, man. I'm always up there, man. They uh, Actually, I think I got the uh, the phones from them. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, no doubt. Shout out to Soulmates, man. Paris is a solid out. dude. He, yeah. uh, I walked in a store and he was, he was uh, he showed me a lot of love. Yeah. He took off the the consignment fee, you know what I'm saying, the commission fee, whatever. That's dope. That's they dope. actually have like, listen, man, there's been three or four sneaker stores come through this city mm -hmm. and throughout the last uh, 18 years. And as far as like that type of store, they're the coolest shop I've seen. Yeah, man. You know, they got cool, cool shit, good and people. And like I said, they got a bunch of stuff in there. It's pretty dope, man. It's pretty dope. 
That's what's up, man. So before we end this show, man, I always ask people, like, is there anything you want to ask me? <laughs> Dang, man. You should have told me this before. I, <laughs> <laughs> I just put them on the spot, man. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Is there anything you want to ask? Um, anything at all. I always ask, I always ask anyone who comes on a show, no matter how big or, you know. So, I just, uh, man, just as a, a young a young person trying to get it, like, what would you, what advice would you give in all the young people out there trying to, I guess, reach the height you are? It's not even in just like jewelry or sports, just any young entrepreneur or young hustler out there is trying to make it. What, what advice would you give them? I mean, this is this. One, my life, I always say, it, my life has been powered by dreams, right? Mm -hmm. At a certain time, though, you aim real high. Yeah. So you aim for the sky, right? And then you got to aim and like, all right, well, look, look, let's just say, for instance, all right, let me focus. Okay. I know I could be the manager at Walmart. Mm -hmm. That I just got to work hard and go in there and just go boom. Not many people have that aspiration. Like, yo, I want to be the fucking manager at Walmart. But you know, like, all right, listen, if I go at least work, go in there, not fuck up, be this, I got a chance to go in there. And there's a way to figure that out, right? Then on the other end, I'm like, listen, I want to be the most famous rapper in the world or I want to be fucking, um, I want to be Tom Brady or I want to be LeBron James, yeah. right? Okay, you go there, boom. All right, so you have to figure out what's real and what's the dream. Now you have to figure out a path. You got to write a blueprint, like as you building a house. Yeah. Some people have no game plan at all whatsoever. <laughs> you got to focus. If you focus and you have a lot of motherfucking persistence and you're smart, cool. But the thing is this, you have to expect failure yeah. and you have to fail because the failure is going to be the best lessons that you learn, right? And you have to realize, all right, this ain't going to happen for me. There's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's the, the day we live in right now, you got literally 40-year-old dudes who are like, yo, man, I'm about to drop this mixtape. I'm about to be popping on this album. And like, bro, because they're like, hey, um, never stop chasing your dreams. Yeah, up to a certain extent. You feel <laughs> yeah. me, though? You no, know what I mean? That's real. That's it's very like real. When you're young, it's like, listen, man, you have way more real estate to fuck up in. You know, you got your 20 to like your late 20s. All right, boom. You got to start getting serious at a certain point, you know, but you always have to have, if you out there doing illegal shit, you out there hustling, doing something, you got to have one legitimate hustle yeah. or you ain't going to be able to turn into what you need to do. You know what I'm saying? And, and um, one thing I always tell people and like Lil Duvall said, he don't need it, but he tripping. You got to have good credit, bro. You like, you, you, you got to make sure your credit good. And I fucked it up so many times. I talk about it on the show. Um, but for young people, man, like it's tough going on to your phone, yeah. looking at somebody in your city, even if you live in fucking Nashville or something and seeing a dude pull up in a Ferrari or a Lambo, seeing a dude, not knowing he's probably not renting it, probably not his or whatever, but you see that some of these kids don't know that and they sit there and be like, yo, fuck, I just want to be in some Balenciaga clothes and some fucking off-white shoes and whatever and not realize like, yo, man, focus on all the important shit first. Mm -hmm. Like, and even today, this is important for young people to understand. I seen a dude, he had an iPhone 10, he had AirPods, mm. he had some off-whites. Now they weren't the crazy ones, but they're still like $700, right? Yeah. And he had like a cool little outfit on, right? And then he was waiting for the bus. No, no, no offense, listen, I'm not, I'm not getting into him, right? But he was young, young, like his dude was between 16 and 19. Don't know how he afforded everything, but he has thousands upon thousands of dollars on him, right? Now, imagine, let's just say he decided to put some money in gold or anything else that was much more low risk, mm -hmm. okay? Let's say he was like, all right, check this out. Let me do this. Let me, let me, uh, if anything, people's image is so important. I get it. But like, yo, man, I got this fucking t-shirt from fucking JCPenney. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. You know what people think, right? These pants is expensive. They was gifted to me. But what I'm getting at is like, you got dudes who got a thousand sneakers and never been a thousand miles away from their home. And it's like, man, go get a passport. Go see some culture. Go That's see some real. shit. You know, I got so many people from the hood and they balling, but they ain't never realized that you ain't really balling because you ain't never gone out your neighbor. You won't even go to Beverly. You won't go out of anywhere nice. You want to stay here and be around some fuck shit. You like being harassed by the police. Man, get out of here. Take your family out of here. Go see some shit. And I always just encourage people, man, the younger, the better. Go get a passport. Go, go get some diversity in your life. Go, if you can, be like, oh, I can't. Yeah, you can't because you bought AirPods and a fucking thousand dollar iPhone and everything else. It's like, bro, like I'm just being real, real, you know? That's very real. And it's like, you could put some money away. Even if you was financing or doing some stupid shit, don't do no shit like that, man. Focus on this. And another, another thing too, man, I hate seeing this shit for the young people. Every time I see somebody get on, I would say only one in three people Make sure that do this, man. Take care of your moms, man. Make sure your moms are straight before anybody else. Like, 
I get it. You know, you want to get that Ferrari. But man, bro, if your mom is on the bus, man, you tripping, dog. That's Go right. get you a Benz and get your mom a fucking, you know, an Infinity or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's like, right. yeah. that's so that's right. just my advice for people like on that end. But I mean, as far as is there a get rich fast? No, there's, there's nothing like that. That's just bullshit. You got to take the stairway and no shortcut. It's um, there is no real get rich fast scheme. You know, if you have super talent um, and you're an athlete, and you do certain things and you six, five or six, six and you have a even at that point, it's no guarantees. That's right. So. That's all I can really say. Appreciate that. Um, Quentin Jefferson, everyone, man, please, thank you so much for coming thank on the you. show, man. Appreciate you having me. Thank you. I really you. appreciate it. I know, listen, man, he got a game tomorrow. He got a curfew <laughs> here and shit. I had to get a goddamn room just to, but I, I listen, man, I'm sorry if I hounded you on it. I don't no, fucking, no. T- but, but, but because it was like I was here, I wanted to make sure I get this interview. Listen, Good luck tomorrow. Uh, we got to get that W. It's raining oh, on this yeah, motherfucker. Man. It's going to be gritty. <laughs> hey, but you <laughs> know what? Gonna it's going to it. be sold out. Yeah. It's going to be fucking crazy yeah, in CenturyLink. <laughs> and uh, hey, y'all, if you guys don't know, um, tell them your Twitter, Twitter, Instagram names. Um, I am uh, Q underscore Jeff 99. And uh, that's my Instagram and Twitter. I'm not really on there. So just follow me on Instagram. Man. So on Instagram, you see that Q underscore Jeff 99. And uh, he also has spoken to shit, but he'll knock you the fuck out, <laughs> just so you know. Hey. <laughs> hey, y'all, man, we'll be back in a minute. I'm, uh, I'm going to do a little outro in a second, man. Yo, Miles, throw me one of them Lakey beats. So, man, I hope you liked that interview with Quentin Jefferson. He's a solid ass dude. He's a humble dude, you know, and like he's he just he's actually, you know, he's well versed too, man, you know. And uh yo, check it out. Don't go throwing anything at him at a game, or else he might just go up in the stands and fuck you up. You know what I'm saying? He <laughs> he rocks some dope ass Atmos Air Max style cleats today. That shits was was dope, man. What a fucking game, man. What a wow. And Quentin had an awesome game too. Two sacks batted a pass away it was such a fucking nail biter close game this shit went down to the last few seconds man to be honest our offense man was kind of bad man our total rushing yards between well total rushing yards between both teams combined was barely over 100 yards man, that shit was just i don't know man it's just we got to get our shit together but as far as cincinnati like dalton his offense was crazy man he threw for fucking 418 yards he did his thing and i felt like we just couldn't get it together right we had so many three and outs like what the fuck is going on you know but guess what we got the w we got that motherfucking win man and um we head to pittsburgh next week after all this crazy has pittsburgh talk with quentin and mac miller and shit is crazy um we got to get that w there too century link man it felt so good to be fucking back man just i don't know what it is this is the most charged up i've been about about just uh, the new season, it just felt so fucking good. It was so lit. CenturyLink is always lit, man. It was, it was you know, it was the home opener. Um, I got there kind of early. Got there like right when they opened up, like 11.15. They opened up at 11 or something. And, you know, I always love the pro shop there, man. I always want to grab a bunch of shit. I just start getting all fucking real. Oh, I need to get a golf shirt and a motherfucking beach towel and some pins, a keychain, a fucking license plate and a couple hats and just all kinds of shit. I was just, man. But I got a few souvenirs. My father-in-law I told you he's a diehard Seahawks fan, man. He's crazy. He, um, and uh, you know what? One of my boys who's like one of the cats, one of the, one of the main cats at Rude, my boy Scott, man, I didn't even know, man. Dude, real, at first, and, and I hope he hears this shit. When I met this motherfucker, man, I thought he was just some soft fashion dude. Like he was just on some weird emo shit. When he told me he was from Seattle, it made sense. But when we started talking about like football, football, like he fucked me up because I just looked at this dude and he just looked like he was in a grunge band, you know, like a Filipino grunge band. Like he, this motherfucker was related to like the, the, the lead singer of Journey now, that Filipino dude. That's, I'm just joking. He's not. But like he showed me pictures of how serious his, his, his family gets down. And like 50, 60 fucking people, all, you know, blue and green, real Hawks outfits and hack, Hawks fucking, you know, colors and everything, like, just gathering outside his crib, and, you know, it was, it was a trip, because, you know, we talking about everyone from fucking wags to fucking Trey Flowers and everything, and just, man, I was just, I was just so hyped, you know, that, that, uh, someone else that I've been fucking with now is, is, is from Seattle, he's, he's, he's a big Seahawks fan, and, um, 
I don't know, man. It, it, it just felt good to be in there. And, uh, you know, actually, you know what's funny? I never knew they had a taco time inside Century Link. And they don't have taco time in L.A. I know they didn't got one in on Vegas or some shit, but, you know, taco time is just something i kind of seen, a you know, fast food joint i see in, in Seattle. But, uh, you know, they had one inside Century Link. But, I didn't, you know, I didn't fuck with that. You know, my favorite spot is the fried clam spot, yeah. Fry clams and the motherfucking French fries. This shit is crazy. I Man, that's my shit. But yo, know, once again, I gotta thank man. I want to thank Quentin Jefferson one more time for coming on the show, man. It was dope to get that Seahawks perspective. I'm excited to come back. I'm gonna come back to to, to Seattle on October 20th. Back to Century Link. You know what I'm saying? To see us play against the motherfucking Baltimore Ravens and the return of Earl Thomas. Man, I miss Lob, man. But yo, listen. Earl Thomas coming back to Century Link. I know he's gonna talk all this shit, and uh, we gotta shut all that shit down. And you know it's cool. I miss you, bro. But you know we gotta we gotta get that shit out of here, man. I think um, we got a big chance to do some things this year, like for real. I know we're gonna do the playoffs, but I really think just off the fact that you know you got um, a couple cats, a couple real professional NFL analysts saying that you know they they you know they they chose Seattle to make it to the Super Bowl and I think that's dope man I really think uh you know well you know I'm going to try to hit like four games in Seattle with my crazy schedule y- y'all already know my schedule is fucking crazy I I am going to hit the bay you know cuz we have that rival with the Niners I fucking hate the Niners I've always hated them never liked the fucking Niners fuck the Niners um uh, weird right cuz I love San Francisco so much but uh yeah we're going to be at Levi Stadium 11-11 November 11th, going to the fucking Niners game. In fact, my boy Scott from Root is going up there with me. We're going to hit that um, hit that fucking Levi Stadium, repping that hawk shit, and I don't give a fuck what anyone got to say. Um, I'm going to try to hit the Rams game in L.A. I'm not sure. I might be in Dubai, man, to like December 10th or something. So, fuck, if I'm in L.A., definitely going to check that out. And that's fucking home. So, you know, we're going to really get it in. In fact, I haven't even seen a fucking Rams game. And fuck the Rams. Motherfuckers, oh, fuck LA fans. Man, shut your ass up. You ain't no motherfucking LA Rams fan. Get the fuck out of here. I remember when the fucking LA Rams were here in LA, and I had motherfucking homies that played for them. Shout out to my boy Todd Light. He's an old, close friend of mine. You know, my man Roman Pfeiffer, fucking uh, Jerome Bettis. These are people, like, people's of mine, you know, right before they, and then motherfuckers, some of them went over to St. Louis. I mean, Bettis did in the bus. He ended up in Pittsburgh, and um, Roman, he went around different spots. Uh, Actually, no, I think he, he got a chip with the, with, with, um, the Rams. I know uh, Todd did. Todd's my guy, man. Todd's that's my motherfucking dude. And um, Roman got a chip with the Patriots, too, man. Fuck the Patriots. Can't stand that fucking team. But you know what? When the Rams were in L.A., per se, L.A. Rams, they weren't in L.A. They were motherfucking Anaheim. Like, stop that shit. And they come back here like, I'm not fucking. And the Chargers? I didn't want to talk about this on this episode. This shit is going to just, man. Chargers should have just stayed in fucking San Diego. Nobody want to fuck with the Chargers. Anyways, if I'm if I'm in town, um, I'm gonna check out that that Rams Seahawks game. Speaking of the town, I'm head to Oakland and Sacramento this week. Um, oh yeah, I definitely will drop part two and part three, maybe part four. I don't know if there's gonna be part four, but part two and part three of the K Town Hustler series, the Ben Baller True Hollywood stories. I hope you guys like part one. You know, that's like I'm really trying to get into how I got to where I am today. Um, we're gonna get into right towards the end, right when uh, I made my um my my two million dollars selling my sneaker collection and all that. Uh, I got interviews with Austin Rivers. I did a dope one with Austin Rivers, man. That's my guy. Um, billionaire Dan Kang is coming up, and uh, that's gonna be dope. So, yo, I hope you all have a great day, a great week. Remember, you have to make it a great day. All right. And my little motivational, like, words for this episode is try to be a better person today than you were yesterday. Try to be a better person this week than you were last week. Just little small increments, you know, little bit of growth. It'll help. Miles, please take us out of here with one of them dope-ass Lakey instrumentals. God bless y'all. Peace. Peace.